I'm Dario Bard with the Global Pulse Confederation. I'm here with Nathneet Chabra, founder of Global Garbanzo, a company that works exclusively with Kabuli chickpeas. Kabuli chickpeas are India's major pulse export. India produces large caliber Kabuli chickpeas that compete with Mexican product in international markets. Nathneet, why don't you tell us to begin with, tell us a little bit about Global Garbanzo and how it is that you got involved in the Kabuli chickpea trade. Uh, hi, Mr. Dario. Uh, nice to see you this evening. Uh, so, so Kabuli chickpeas uh, is our main our main product of the company. Uh, Kabuli chickpeas. Our motto is to work on one product on which we have the all the information about that. It is easy to work on different different product like lentils, uh, beans, and everything because as a as a brokership company, it is easy to find the same buyers and the same uh, sellers. But uh, we, we prefer to do only one product and try to get more information on one product day by day. So our motto is to work on one product uh, very specifically. So we are, uh, have the all information shared with our buyers, shared with our sellers. Uh, so, uh, the main uh, objective is to work uh, in a good way uh, to give the right information to the buyers and sellers. We are always visiting the destination countries. We are visiting the origination countries. How is the crop uh, in different different origination? So we are at there at the time of harvesting or seeding or so. Uh, we cannot do with all type of pulses crop, but we choose the one product and that's why we are uh, focused on one product. This is the motto of the company. And the beat, but why, why Kabuli chickpeas of all the pulses? Why did you decide on Kabuli? Yeah, look, uh, I based out of uh, Indore, Madhya Pradesh, uh, India, which is the main uh, is, uh, product producing uh, state of uh, Kabuli chickpeas in India and India is one of the major exporters. So at the time I am doing this Kabuli chickpeas trade uh, since 2010-11 I, I started and then it is like a, uh, I'm working on our export side from India then I get the same buyers are asking for the Mexican product, the Russian product, Turkish product so it's like a, uh, when uh, I am doing from India so the same buyers are asking uh, different origins also so like this how Every day, new and new development starts, and then we started from Turkey, then US, then Mexico, uh, Canada. Like this, we are started. So we choose to be with the one product instead of doing many products. Okay, and and the the, the rabbi uh, harvest uh, is it still going on or it's finished? Uh, has it concluded the harvest? The uh, Indian harvest is almost, you can say, 75% uh, is concluded. Uh, rest harvest is under uh, the way. Uh, rest harvest is under the way. And, uh, uh, the, you know, the situation of the COVID-19 here. Uh, so lots of harvest are delayed also because of this. But since uh, our country is under lockdown from 23rd of march till that time around 65 percent harvested and we are ex uh, i'm expecting in the last few days it is come to 75 to 80 percent harvest is done in india and uh, the harvest is the same uh, i mean uh, i posted uh, i given the demand and supply uh, figures on the 10th of january on the gpc so the uh, idea is the same, like the, we have the Indian crop is around 270 or maximum side 280,000 tons for the 2020 uh, crop. Okay, and, and how does that compare to last year's Kabuli crop? So well, last year Kabuli crop was uh, uh, more or less 370 uh, to 380,000 tons, so it is like uh, that uh, less than last year, almost uh, thirty percent less than last year crop. And and why is that the the reduction in volume? The reduction was uh, because of uh, the main reason is of the uh, prices. It's the main reason. Then second reason is uh, uh, the main. Uh, 
traditional farmers are continues on seeding but the new farmers because of the less price they diverge into the wheat because we have a historic rents in 2019 so this uh, they diverted in a wheat because they get, get a guaranteed price from the government on the uh, from the government side on the wheat so they diverted on the wheat so but the traditional farmers is the grown for the chickpeas only and you can say some of the traditional farmers also diverted on the wheat that's why otherwise the normal indian crop is now 350 to 400000 tons but this year we are expecting the crop more or less like 2017 in 2017 also we have the crop like 270 280000 tons okay how about the caliber sizes this year what are, what are you seeing in terms of caliber size uh, this was uh, this year the crop was delayed uh, the same uh, mentioned in the article of 10 January uh, the uh, crop was delayed and because of this the uh, sizes is little bit small than compared to every year like if we say out of total crop if every year we are getting around 55 to 60 percent of the bigger calibers this year it should be like 45 to 50 percent I'm talking about only about the Kabulis chickpeas uh, on that side. So we are uh, having the problem of size for sure this year. Uh, that's why in uh, some days before I, I made an article, or uh, I made uh, an, uh, a point on Twitter that this year the crop uh, bigger size will be a good uh, opportunity uh, for the prices side. Bigger size will be more uh, good this year. And Daphne, you mentioned the COVID-19 pandemic and it's affected, it delayed uh, a bit of the harvest. Could you go into a little bit more detail about what the impact has been on the agriculture sector there in India? Uh, look, in, in India, due to uh, the lockdown, uh, here the uh, first 14 or 15 days, nobody understand what's going to be happen uh, with the, this lockdown. So. Uh, Totally exports are banned till today. There is no exports on the Kabulis uh, side uh, for the uh, Kabuli chickpeas from India. And uh, the harvest is uh, uh, also delayed. Otherwise we will see this time harvest will be completed. So, uh, and there is a demands of the ready product. Uh, like I say, ready product everywhere demand is of the ready product like if you say globally also many european countries uh, many uh, uh, many countries uh, from uh, like uh, dubai saudi arabia they are asking the ready products but india is stopped uh, for supplying this chickpeas. so th this all demands is go to the other origins so uh, this uh, covid 19 effect uh good demands in the pulses uh, is uh, for our products is a cheap piece because you can keep uh, this product uh, for one or two months but uh, so that's why the people are uh, mostly doing nowadays they are taking uh, they are buying the product uh, for the storage for one or two months same uh, so that's why we will see uh, we we see a ready product demands everywhere wow um so, Lavdi, if I understand that India has closed off exports, they're not exporting. Yes, yes, yes. Since we have many contracts of March to be shipped, we have some contracts of April to be shipped. But as of now, we don't have finding the way uh, from our city uh, to uh, shipping to the port and from port to the, uh, I mean, uh, out export the product. Uh, because in India, the farmers also are not allowed to bring the products to sell in the market. So the farmers are not coming, uh, the transport are stopped. So all the chain is like blocked. Wow. And, yeah. and you mentioned a little bit about consumer demand. Has, has that been, um, have consumers been buying Kabuli chickpeas too? Have you seen an increase in domestic sales there also? let's say like here it's almost lockdown situation uh, so the products which are in the main uh, consumption area like you can say in delhi in punjab uh, they are uh, wants the, the the buyers or the wholesalers want to buy the ready product 
they don't want to buy the product for the next month delivery or something. They want because they also have the from the retailers they have the demands of the ready product. So everything is on the ready ready demands, not for the future. Okay. Yeah. And Navneet, I know that you have got contacts all over the world and all the other origins. Could you give us an overview of what's happening at other origins? Uh, I mean, the other origin, if you uh, compare the India situation, as I told you, the size of the crop is like 270 to 280,000 tons uh, for the production this year. And the, with the carryover, it's around 50,000 tons for the Kabuli size. Then we have to think about, uh, we have to say about the Mexico. Mexico uh, carryover is around 70 to 80,000 tons, uh, but it's in a strong two, three hands, so it doesn't make a, uh, pressure on these stocks. So then we have the production this year. Mexico have a less production, like more or less 80 to 90,000 tons, uh, out of which 50,000 tons is from Sinaloa and 40,000 tons is from Sonora area. So around 50,000 tons from Sinaloa only, is, uh, only come in a market for easy sales. But the Sonora farmers are uh, strong farmers, so they can hold the product. So uh, I did not see uh, a very much pressure on the prices uh, in the farms uh, in Mexico. I, uh, we know that uh, Mexico started with 14 pesos, then now today, if you are compared today, it's 20 pesos. However, the dollar also increased from 19 to 24.5 today. So, uh, but overall, there is a good uh, market, good, uh, good crop. Uh, I can say this year will be a crop, uh, this year will be a year for the big caliber chickpeas. We will see a good demands and good prices in the bigger caliber because the supply from India remains slow and the supply from Mexican remains slow uh, because of the less crop sizes. Then we talk about uh, in, in coming days, I, uh, the four major factors which affect the carbolytic piece prices uh, in the medium, uh, medium calibers like 8, 9 and 10 mm and 7 mm. So the main uh, coming factors will be how the U.S. crop will be seeding, how the Canada crop will be seeding, how the Turkey and how is the Russia. These four uh, factors uh, will change uh, the scenario of the smaller size. Uh, I, I saw last week the report of the USDA and it is saying like 30% uh, less in USA. They did not give them the number of the Canadian side uh, because Canadian in F April and uh, we get the seeding intentions. But USA, we got 30% less. So Canadian, we see how much less, but my idea, it should be less around 30% for sure uh, in Canada also. Uh, Turkey, if we say Turkey, Turkey will remain in the same size of the chickpeas because the government is supporting the farmers uh, in a well manner and last year also they paid like 32 Turkish, uh, 3200 Turkish lira uh, for them uh, for per metric ton chickpeas. So this year it should be uh, the same prices to the farmers. So I don't think so the Turkey, Turkey already start the seeding. Some areas of the Turkey is finished also like Gaziantep area is finished in the seeding but they are uh, 15 days more to finish the seeding and I my idea they will uh, at least uh, seed the same area like last year so Turkey is a uh, uh, again be a supplier uh, in coming days for the uh, for this small caliber chickpeas then Argentina we have now Argentina uh, is, is still uh, having the product 50 to 70,000 tons uh, in the beans. Uh, I'm talking about Russia. Russia, I don't think so that Russia will be uh, reduced to too much, but yes, uh, it, sh uh, it should be reduced around 10 to 20 percent in Russia also. So if we are comparing last year crop is like 300,000 tons, this year maybe we will see 250,000 tons from Russia. So if 
this all numbers come in true like us canada turkey and russia i think uh, we will see again a good market for the smaller size chickpeas because there is not not lo lots of origin uh, who can supply uh, the smaller uh, calibers of chickpeas like ukraine spain uh, france this all uh, don't have the too much uh, chickpeas for the 2020 season for seeding also so i think uh, the market of chickpeas remains good uh, more remains good for the bigger calibers but smaller calibers also follow if uh, this usa canada crop will be less and russia crop will be less then we will see the small caliber also start following the market well, that's good news because the chickpea market was, uh, we were experiencing a glut. Uh, so you, yes. see, you see equilibrium returning. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, if uh, the USA and Canada even have the carry over the stocks, but if the sentiments drive the market, so if there is a 30% less in the seeding areas, I think this sentiment will uh, start the market to move uh, in the smaller calibers as well. Great. Well, thank you so much, Nabneed. It's always a pleasure to speak with you, and we will check in with you again in about a month's time. Thank you, Mr. Dill. Thank you. Thank you.